You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, get out, Get the point. Good. And now... Fendum. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. They call me Mellow Grammy, but they don't know me. <laughs> hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody. This is Grammy Mary, and you are listening to Grammy's Rocketeer here on RealLibertyMedia.com, channel 3, and also on the RLMRadio.xyz site and the RLM TuneIn radio station and the RLM Internet Radio Station, and all kind of other RLM radio places. So, hey, hi, ho, how you doing? <laughs> I hope you're having an absolutely amazing wacka 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 doodle Wednesday. I know I am. Um, let's see here. I'm I'm playing I'm playing with buttons. You know me. I gotta push buttons. <laughs> That gets me in trouble every damn time. But, yeah, I can't help myself. I can't help it. <laughs> okay, let's see. Who do I got listening this evening? Um, Let's go look over here on Twitter. Thank you ever so much, Barman, for tweeting me out. I truly do appreciate it. I also saw it messes with the stream. I have, I have a piss poor flow, don't you know? <laughs> I ought to see someone about that. Oh, well. In any case, if you're listening on Spreaker, if you want to give me some static, come on over to the RLM chat. It's reallibertymedia.com. And uh, join the chat. Make up a nickname. Give me some shit. I love it. Because, I mean, I don't have a place to store it, but I'll give it right back to you. Honest, with a few sprinkles on top. Just for special. Because I'm a sprinkly kind of gal. <laughs> okay, over here in the corner pocket, who do I see? JJ's just quit. Other than that, there's lots of people logged in. And I shared that, yeah, I'm going to be on. But, eh. eh. If you're listening, hi. If you're not, eh. I get it. Okay, you got a life. Damn it. I hate when that happens. On Fakey Book, the lovely Mary B chimed in over here. She's going to be listening in from Down Under. And I'll bet you you've got nice warm weather. I had really nice warm weather today, too. It got up to 63 degrees. But you know what? I got a winter storm warning for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> blowing snow yay 63 degrees for the daytime and then tonight blowing snow 50 mile an hour winds too yeehaw it's gonna be fun out here in grammyville hey that's my story and i'm sticking to it because you know what if i can't be positive about it then huh, i'm positive that <laughs> the wind's gonna blow because i'm out here in the middle of nowhere and there ain't nothing to stop it okay over here on the uh effin site i see grimmy has shared me over here and uh, thank you grim and Genco 41 has joined. Welcome aboard, Genco 41. I also see Java Doctor was over here, as well as Pissed Off Patriot. So, hi, everybody, and looky there. Grimmy shared some stuff from Hal. Thank you. Thank you, Grim. Behind the woodshed. Y'all need to listen to that. Hal's one sharp feller. Yes, he is. Over here on Mines. Let's see. Aidens, I hope that's how you pronounce that, sweetheart. Hi there. Um, he's a new follower over here on Minds, which if you're not on Minds, it really is very interesting. I really like it. Um, it's Minds.com. So come on over and check it out. A lot of really sharp people over here and a lot of crazy people too. But, you know, that's okay because I like crazy. Every time I look in the mirror, I see crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay oh i got another notification over here on twitter hey i got a new stalker too sweet i'm up to 377 <laughs> oh it's the little things in life it really is hi soul filing cabinets how are you doing sweetie i see you over here on twitter okay 
And now to the place where you need to be if you want to give me static. Over here in the RLM chat. There's lots of people over here tonight. Hey. Hi. Ho. Al Gore. Yeah. Oh, wait. What's that? Snow falls in the Sahara Desert for a third time in 40 years. That global warming does some really crazy shit. You know that? And then they changed it to climate change because, well, that's what climate does. And so they're not actually lying. At least not in the name. We'll just leave it at that. So, um, idiots abound. Bound, rebound, bound, rebound. Have you ever seen that cartoon on YouTube? It's a Pixar thing. Bound, rebound. I like that video. Because it's silly. Okay, over here in the RLM. Hey, barman. Um, oh, thank you, Cowboy Tech. I will get to that when I get done this evening okay right here up top is barman the most splendid for a spot in the whole wide world why because i said so and because he shares me all over the place and wow barman you're just giving me away damn it i feel so used <laughs> i get around holy smokes Ooh. well you know I, I waited until i was in the prime of my life before i started getting around apparently Okay, I also see Cowboy Tech is here. Cowboy Tech, such a wonderful man. I hope you're hearing pleasant voices, sweetheart. He's a sharp cookie, too. I also see Grimner, the RLM god, is over here. Thank you once again, Grimler, for sharing me, tweeting me. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, did you hear that? Uh, uh, Grimmy has Grimfinger, you know, where he his typing gets a little bit ahead of... Or something. There, somehow or another, the wires get crossed. Well, sometimes I get to talking so darn much that I my tongue gets fee-buttled. And so, hi, Grimmy. <laughs> I love you, honey. Um, I also see the lovely Moose Girl. Mercy! Oh, Moose Girl is so awesome. She's just a she's just a walking, talking cup of op awesome sauce. That's just all there is to it. And she and Grimmy do the Freakers Ball on Friday night. So y'all need to check that shit out because that's a good time had by all as well. I also see the lovely Kate is here from down in the great state of Florida. Where it was, it's been cold lately. Damn it. What the hell? <laughs> and looky there, Asmodeus Asmo is here. Hi, Asmo. And the lovely Beth Z. As well as BTC Bob. Man, that... Bitcoin stuff is just going nuts. Going nuts. It's cybernetic. Yeah, that's right, Grimmy. It's Grimler. <laughs> that's what happens when when I get fee-buttled. <laughs> I didn't know that that come across quite so clear. <laughs> it's a wackadoodle Wednesday, and it's me. So, you know, go figure. Okay, yeah, I'm that crazy woman that starts telling you about all them conspiracy theories. They're all theories, I tell you. But gravity is a law, even though it hasn't been proven yet. Because they don't really know how to prove it. They can't differentiate it between, you know, magnetism. <laughs> well, okay, moving along. Mm, yeah, it's a theory of gravity. It depends on where you put theory, I think, because if you have a uh, conspiracy theory or if you have the theory of, see, that's that's where I think they they get you. You know, let's let's slur instead of come up with some valid, reasonable argument, shall we? Ah, that's the way the wind blows, that noxious fume that comes out of most politicians pie hole. OK, back to saying hi. Hi. See, I just get off on a tangent um hi chelsea denis you forgot to oh what i haven't put any o oh in your life lately sorry looky there a double dip and a chloe 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 is here hi chloe chloe and gramps oh that's me <laughs> I also see IB Don C is here. Hi, Don. How are you? And Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is in the house as well. J Dread. Hansel. Oh, I just love Hansel. 
Hansel is so fun. I learn a lot from Hansel. I really do. Sometimes not necessarily the lesson he wants me to learn, but I learn a lot. You know, you can't you can't tell what lesson someone's going to learn. You might try and teach them one thing, but they're going to learn whatever they damn well please. So, <laughs> hi Hansel. Um, I see JJ's is here, that Scottish feller. Ah, oh, JJ's. I just love to listen to you talk. It just, it gives me this warm and fuzzy feeling. It's way cool. Okay, malware, honey, you're just going to have to wait till I'm done broadcasting. It's just all there is to it. Uh, Juana Taco is here. Hi, Juana. Oh, tacos. That sounds good, but I don't have any hamburger thought out. Damn it. Oh, well. Meister Brower, hey, party, Woody, how you doing, hon? And the lovely rain is in the house. You know, they're projecting rain for me. It's dry and a popcorn fart out here. Has been for a couple of months. I would like some rain. It's that shit that they're projecting afterwards that I don't want. I don't want no blowing, drifting snow. I will just take the rain. Thank you very much. I like rain. She's very lovely. RLM Fluke. She's the RLM. Oh, she's the, excuse me. Yeah, let's get this straight. She's the Vanna White of the RLM. Now, I know there's a lot of people that say it's a bot. Well, bots have gender too. And I decided that RLM Fluke, I identify with RLM Fluke as a female, as Vanna White. So there, we can do about it. <laughs> I also see Rob Works is here. Rob, I have not seen you fire up the bubbler. They call me Mellow Grammy. I need the bubbler to be mellow, although I probably won't be tonight. Just got to tell you, I have a few things in my pocket that ain't going to be real mellow. Okay, I also, <laughs> just warning you, there, here there be F-bombs. I'll just warn you right now. Trust no one is here. Hey there, you trusty feller. I also see Colfax 101 is logged in, as well as Dakota, where it's really cold, and I need to quit my whining, because, yeah, I ain't near as cold as Dakota. Oh, cool! Julian Assange granted Ecuadorian ID required for pass, passport and citizenship. I don't want citizenship. I want, well, yeah, I do. I want to be a citizen of Grammyland. That's the only place I want to be a citizen of. I want to, I want, I identify as a citizen of Grammyland and that's it. Maybe I need to make my own passport and everything. That would be cool. <laughs> I may have to do that. Hello, Photoshop. <laughs> I also see Dima is in the house. Hi, Dima, as well as Flash Nasty. Flasher, it's kind of light for you, isn't it? It's like dark 30 in your neck of the woods. And Frumpy, Frumpy, I didn't have time to get dressed in my Frumpy clothes, but Frumpy did it for me. So thank you, Frumpy, for being Frumpy. Gooberzilla is also here. Apparently, he hasn't finished his spaceship so he can go out in outer space. Honey, you let me know how it works going through that Van Allen radiation belt, okay? I truly appreciate that. I, th I think you need to do like a hyperspacing or you need to do like a wormhole, you know, and just kind of bypass that thing altogether, you know, just kind of plop from one place to another. It's like teleportation, only not. Yeah, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Hi, Kozu. How you doing, Kozu? Moy, 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 moy is here, as well as Poxified and Pond Sauce. And Slim Jim Flim is in the house. Hi, Slim Jim. As well as Teddy, the cuddly one. Although I have never conversed with Teddy, but I've decided he's cuddly. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Phantom 2, the one that made my intro for me. Thank you ever so much, Phantom. You the bomb. He's awesome. He loiters over here, and he loiters over in the corner pocket over there on uh, Crush and Run Chat. He's pretty cool. I like, I like Phantom. He's a sweetheart. He's a very intelligent young man. Now, I think I need a sip of coffee. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just refreshed Twitter and there's Calvin and Hobbes. Mm, childhood is so disillusioning. Yes, it is, especially when they make you adult all the time. I did, I've been a very good adult this week, though. I really have. That's why I get to cut loose on the radio, because sometimes you can only adult for so long. 
before you finally go, okay, I'm done. I don't want to adult anymore. So, Gary L. Hi, sweetie. He's over here in the on fakie book as well and he shared my post thank you sweetheart i truly appreciate that letting more people know that the crazy woman's on the radio and you know what if i can do it you can too so if you have a radio show idea come on over to the rlm and get with grimmy and chit chat with him and maybe he can get you set up to where you can broadcast as well the more the merrier it could be fun you never know i never thought i would do talk radio even though I talk a lot. <laughs> I've been told that. JJ's told me that quite a few times, actually. Damn, woman, you talk a lot. Yes, I do. But basically, it's on the radio that I talk a lot. <laughs> that's that's where I do most of it. Okay, so where do I want to go first? Mm, I put so many things in my pocket that I actually I actually had to pull the lint out. I had no room for lint because I had so many things to stuff in my pocket for tonight. So, oh, you know what? I was talking about conspiracy theories and the theory of gravity, even though they say it's a law of gravity, but they have not proven it yet. They really haven't because they don't have any kind of um, experiments that definitively prove that it's gravity and not magnetics. So just saying from what i understand now if i'm wrong let me know correct me because i will i will correct myself live on the radio but as far as i know they have not done any kind of experiments to prove that it's gravity and not magnetism so in any case over here on the waking times i saw this on twitter and i clicked on it and it's from april of 2013 but I like the headline, so I'm going to go there. And if it doesn't work out the way I had planned or had assumed it would, I will just move along. I've been known to do that as well. So the headline is, The Truth is Out There, The Role of Conspiracy Theories in Personal Transformation. And I got to tell you, it, I have done an awful lot of transforming I'm a transformer. I'm a transformer Grammy or a Grammy transform. However you want to put that, I have transformed a lot over the last seven, eight, nine, ten years. Ah, oh, God, more than that. Wow, 15 maybe? Well, I'm telling my age now. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, Snowden issues warning. Do not use Google. I don't like Google. And I don't use Google's me messaging app either. Okay, back to this. <clears throat> so, ignorance brought about anguish and terror, and the anguish grew like a fog, and no one was able to see. That's from the Gospel of Truth, Nag Hammadi texts. Hmm, I have a link on ignorance as well. I, is the universe being very synchronistic with me tonight? I think so. Humanity is asleep, concerned only with what is useless. Oh, wow, this is very appropriate for now. Living in a wrong world, do not prattle before the people of the path. Rather, consume yourself. Ooh, that sounds painful. You have an inverted knowledge and religion if you are upside down in relation to reality, which I think this reality is opposite world. I really do, because I saw something earlier, and, you know, cannabis is bad juju. It's horrible. It's nasty. And it has killed nobody this year. And um, the uh, natural kind, let me put that out there as well. And yet Big Pharma has killed lots but Big Pharma is okay, and cannabis is bad juju. So see, it's opposite world. Uh, let's see, back to where I was at. Man is wrapping his net around himself. A lion. The man of the way bursts his cage asunder. That is from Sufi master Sanai, teacher of Rumi, or Rumi. Rummy? <laughs> oh, my mind went somewhere else. Arr. 
That's in the walled garden of truth. So, what does conspiracy and cover-up play in the multifarious facets of life in the closing years of this 20th century? Oh, it play, well, how about the opening years of the 21st? Are powerful groups manipulating events as part of a long-range strategy to bring about a totally controlled global society? Ah. Uh -huh. Does recognition of conspiracies lead to paranoia and delusion? Mm, paranoia, yes, but it's really not paranoia if they really are out to get you. And delusion, well, that's the slur they throw at you when they don't have a valid and reasonable argument. Or does it actually explain events and thereby empower people? Um, I go for door number three. It is not the purpose of this short article to examine the range of crimes, cabals, and secret plots broadly covered by the word conspiracy. Nor do we intend to prove the existence of some international conspiracy at work in the crisis-torn world of the 90s. What we want to touch on is the implications of conspiracy theories for personal transformation. What we want to explore here is a different way of seeing the world. Oh, this could be fun. This could be fun. Oh, they have a link on the side. Are you a sovereign being? Time to start acting like it. I may have to go there next. Hmm. So first, let us define the meaning of that seemingly disturbing word, conspiracy. Webster's International Dictionary gives it as one connotation a combination of men for an evil purpose, a plot. The Oxford Dictionary of English agrees defining conspiracy as a combination of persons for an evil or unlawful purpose, an agreement between two or more to do something criminal, illegal, or reprehensible. A plot. And it thickens. If as a significant number of researchers claim, it can be shown that influential, largely hidden elites have knowingly combined their efforts in a plot or plots to manipulate and control people and events, then on the basis of the standard definition just cited, a conspiracy does indeed exist. Readers who are accustomed, or is it conditioned, to automatically regard any mention of conspiracy as irrational paranoia will find this very subject a problem. Jonathan Vankin, the author of two excellent books exploring a host of conspiracy theories, observes that the word conspiracy may be a problem for some but only because it represents the unknown, mystery, and risk. Those are the things that grip the human mind and bring it to life. These ideas can only be a problem for those who wish to keep the, our minds under control or for those who are comfortable in their glass cage. Last century, the British politician Benjamin Disraeli, a man of wide political experience, declared that the world is governed by very different personages from what is imagined by those who are not behind the scenes. This century, U.S. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt has been quoted as saying, in politics, nothing happens by accident. If it happens, it was planned that way. Hence, all of you people that are going, Shitlery should have won. No. No. She did something to piss off the leeches at B, and she got douched to the side in order to have Trumples come in there. Give us some hope. Or as I heard earlier today in a video, some hope porn. Inundate us with hope porn instead of fear porn, lull us into a false sense of security. Hmm. Ruling elites will use conspiracy 
states political scientist, or that's from a political scientist and activist, Dr. Michael Parenti. They will finance elections, publicity campaigns, publishing houses, wire services, and academic studies. They will use surveillance, mobsters, terrorists, assassins, and death squads. Conspiracy researchers look behind the dark curtain for that wizard of Oz. And that shrouds history and the sacrosanct assumptions reinforced contemporary society. They really are, as investigative reporter Jim Hogan says, two kinds of history, the safe and sanitized Disney version, so widely available to be unavoidable, and a second one that remains secret, buried, and unnamed, which is why it is his story. They just took the ex extra S out to fool ya. This second version of history, Jonathan Vankin and John Whalen argue, does indeed have a name. Conspiracy theory. According to the co-authors of the 50 Greatest Conspiracies of All Time, the official safe Disney version of history could just as easily be called the New York Times version, or the TV news version, or the college textbook version. The main resistance to conspiracy theories comes not from people on the street, but from the media, academia, and government. People who manage the national and global economy of information. And not that's why they say knowledge is power. And they are flexing their muscles. The structure of modern world demands mass adherence to faith in the institutions. You are being institutionalized. Straight jackets are on the right. Lovely little pills are on the left. You're welcome to the padded room. And these institutions that maintain the existing order and make it run. These institutions are innumerable. Government, business, science, yeah, educraption, and politics. Those many bloodsuckers. And their survival is dependent on people's faith in their authority. Yes, it's all job security. How do they keep feeding if you don't keep believing? We have to believe the institutions are functioning in our best interests, wrote Vankin in his 1991 groundbreaking book, Conspiracies, Cover-Ups, and Crimes. We have to believe what, pe what the people within those institutions assure us to be true. Oh, sure, there's probably a little kernel of truth along with that very circuitous route you take around it. Ah, oh, the plethora of noxious smells. This is why conspiracy theories are universally uh, anathema to, is that how you say that? Mmm, to the establishment. In other words, the establishment do not lack them. They directly challenge the status quo, undermining the blind faith of the brainwashed masses in society's Machiavellian leaders. Mm, see, that's why I don't wash my mind out, so I have a very dirty mind. Lots of cobwebs that keep interconnecting all of these lovely little things that go through my brain. Vankin quotes anthropologist Jules Henry as saying that, our civilization is a tissue of contradictions and lies. God bless you. I think we should sneeze on it. Henry used the term sham for the everyday deceptions that reinforce this malignant society. Sham gives rise to coalitions because usually sham cannot be maintained without confederates. In other words, to keep the system afloat requires a conspiracy. In Sham, Henry continues, the deceiver enters into 
an inner conspiracy against himself. Acknowledging the conspiracies and cover-ups behind history and contemporary events means we can no longer lie to ourselves. Like Colin Wilson's outsider who cannot live in the comfortable insulated world of bourgeois, accepting what he sees and touches as reality. Modern civilization is a conspiracy against reality. R.D. Lang explains in The Politics of Experience how people are conditioned and brainwashed by modern society, beginning with the children, because it's for the children. They're coming for the children. It is imperative to catch them in time. Without the most thorough and rapid brainwashing, their dirty minds would see right through our dirty tricks. Children are not yet fools, but we shall turn them into imbeciles like ourselves, with high IQs if possible, because IQs just show how good you are at taking tests. They don't really measure intelligence. They measure memory and regurgitation. Now, from the moment of birth, when the Stone Age baby confronts the 20th century mother, the baby is subjected to these forces of violence called love. As its mother and father and their parents and their parents before them have been. These forces are mainly concerned with destroying most of its potentialities. And on the whole, this ex enterprise is successful. By the time the new human being is 15 or so, we are left with a being like ourselves, a half-crazed creature, more or less adjusted to a mad world. This is normality in our present age. In our conditioned environment, we accept what we are told, largely without question. Society, or more precisely, the ruling eliches, define reality. Central to every conspiracy is the suppression of specific information or the deliberate avoidance of certain key facts. Control of information is a mechanism of social control. If information is used by the ruling elites to program and mentally enslave people, then information can be used to deprogram and liberate them as well. Knowledge is the key to freedom. According to the Sufis, the potential for clear, direct perception in man in his everyday life is largely frustrated by a distorting complex of psycho, uh, psychophysiological conditioning factors. Often, these appear in the seemingly innocuous forms of unfounded assumptions and expectations. Consequently, man is ready, mental putty, in the hands of powerful manipulators. Conspiracies are detected only by the exercise of unfettered perception and thinking. Thus, conspirators must propagate a necessary level of confusion in those whom they seek to deceive and control. Oh, look at this over here, build a wall. Oh, look at this over here, North Korea. Oh, look at this over here, Russia. Oh, look at this over here, Iran. Oh, look at this over here, cannabis. Oh, look at this over here, vaccines. Oh, look, shiny baubles, every one of them. The mere realization of the existence and activities of various conspiracies orchestrated by the powerful ruling leeches, note leeches, has a, hard, a largely liberating effect on the thinking individual, disclosing to him as it does the vast magnitude of the lies and deception incorporated in various layers of official culture. 
the whole social structure, educational structure, economic and political structures are directly challenged. Once a person realizes that there is a hidden history behind our so-called his story, they invariably start to want to break away from the feudal human pattern of seeing reality as it is not, and thereby living a lie. They want to abandon the anesthetic of ignorance and suppression within which man cocoons himself and to embrace the intensity of reality as it is. Conspiracies and cover-ups do exist. However, their underlying root cause is our own irresponsibility, ignorance, and inactivity. The world tells us what we want to hear, giving us justifications for different states of irresponsibility. Civilization may well be destroying itself, but individuals don't have to destroy themselves with it. In other words, take responsibility for what you know and what you do not know. And if you are responsible and know that you do not know enough about something, do your own research. In other words, quit being a lump. Get active in feeding your mind what it needs to hear, what it needs to consume, what you need to truly survive. Don't destroy yourself. The modern world with its phobias and neurosis and contradictions and conflicts is what we must overcome. We must break our links, sever our ties, plumb the depths of our unconsciousness, and cut the bonds with which we bound ourselves. Confronted by the intrigue of conspiracy and cover-up, we don't react to the sham by constructing an equally dogmatic, paranoid worldview. Nor do we become downcast, depressed, or consumed with red-hot anger. There's no point in hiding away or running wildly in the streets. Just be aware from the inner certainty, clarity, and calm of awareness. From there proceeds the right and constructive action. Channel your anger, your fear, your hopes, and dreams into total awareness. By discerning society's true condition, you are free from the bonds of ignorance and no longer a pawn in the game. Awakening from the sleep of conditioned existence, we can appreciate the words of the Sufi teacher Al-Ghazali. The higher one ascends a mountain, the farther one sees. Some radical students of the Bible identify the existing social, political, and economic order as Babylon. Yeah, pretty closely related. A name synonymous with a system of total oppression and exploitation taken from the book of Revelation. The government, the bureaucracy, indeed all worldly authorities are mere instruments of Babylon. Babylon built on falsehood, and sustained by ignorance. When you ignore what's right in front of your face intentionally because you like being comfortable, it's so much easier to complain. That's when you are living in the state of ignorance. This will one day come crashing down because of fundamental untruths. Awakened to the actual nature of this world, one's life is that of exile, a stranger in a strange land. Conspiracy and cover-up is what we first encounter when we begin to perceive real life in Babylon. It may be that mankind has been invited to participate in a bizarre kind of contest 
with some undeclared cosmic opponents. That says Brad Steger, who is a writer on the paranormal. Man may have been challenged to play the reality game. And if he can once apprehend the true significance of the preposterous clues, if he can but master the proper moves, he may obtain a clearer picture of his role in the cosmic scheme of things. Wow. And I read something earlier today from a dear friend over on Fakie Book about um, how sometimes we, when we are not getting the full picture, we think we're seeing the full picture and we are so stubborn in saying that we know, we know what's going on. But we refuse to take a step back. And when you take that step back, you do get a broader view. So if you take a couple more steps back, your view gets even broader. The one problem with that, though, is you need to watch where you're stepping back. Because if you don't watch your step, you just might go off a cliff that someone led you to. So... You need to be very wary. You need to be cautious. You need to listen to your gut. When your gut tells you something ain't right here, listen to it. Dig into it. Find something to confirm either what your gut is telling you or what you are reading right here. One way or the other, you're going to learn more. But you need to do it for yourself because nobody else can do it for you. We can lead you to knowledge, but we cannot make you think. That's up to you. Okay, I'm going to put this over here on mines as well. Okay. There we go. And I got it over on that effing side. And hi, Fleet. I see you. Learn to read. Who has to learn to read? I need to learn to read. <laughs> I need to learn to read out loud. I have issues at times case you haven't noticed. Now, um, since that was talking about ignorance, I'm going to go to this one uh, that I saw earlier today, and it was a link on the side of a link that I clicked on. So, <clears throat> let's go check this out, shall we? It's from uniquedesign.net. Ignorance. The biggest obstacle in removing ignorance is the arrogance. You know, those that are just so smart that they just know, and yet they ignore what's right in front of their face. So, <clears throat> ignore arrogance. It is a noun. It's the offensive display of self-importance based on a lack of knowledge. <laughs> Arrogance is being 40% right and 100% certain. Ignore arrogance is being 90% oblivious and 100% certain. Gnosis is being 100% certain and 90% are oblivious. The evil that is in the world always comes from ignorance and good intentions may do as much harm as malevolence if they lack understanding. On the whole, men are more good than bad. That, however, isn't uh, the real point. The most incorrigible vice being that of ignorance, which fancies it knows everything and therefore claims for itself the right to kill. There can be no true goodness nor true compassion without the utter clear-sightedness or the utmost clear-sightedness. Excuse me. 
There always comes a time in history when the person who dares to say that 2 plus 2 equals 4 is punished by death. And the issue is not what reward or what punishment will be the outcome of that reasoning. The issue is simply whether or not 2 plus 2 equals 4. So, this has got several memes attached to it, and I'm just going to go ahead and share this link with you because it's got lots and lots of links and memes. So, I will let you all peruse them at your leisure. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see, pronouns. <laughs> it would help if I could spell. <laughs> there we go. And over here on this lovely effing site as well, just to just touch all my bases. I'll get them to Facebook later. Um, maybe, maybe not. Fakey Book is a little bit on the iffy side. Sometimes it doesn't like some of the links I share. Imagine that. <laughs> I am shocked. Shocked, I tell you. Now, I'm going to go back to this link I saw on the side here. Where did it go? There it is. So, how to supercharge your dopamine levels naturally and never feel depressed or anxious again. <gasps> Sweet! Um, okay, I'm going to go to the sovereign being. Hey, this one is actually a recent one. It's from November 25th of 2017. So are you a sovereign being? Don't you think it's about time to start acting like one? If you claim to be? Hmm? So, there's a growing awareness and indignation about the injustice and inequality running rampant in our world. And growing interest in creating the better world that we all know can exist. One of the key changes that needs to happen to enable the transformation of our humanity is to reclaim our personal power to think for ourselves, to discern truth from disinformation, and to stand firm for what we know is right. The source that created us endowed us with free will and the power to create with our own thoughts, words, and deeds. Yet many of us are squandering these endowments, endowments, jeez, grams, squandering them so badly that the probable future of humanity is not looking very bright. Humanity is at a cr critical juncture in this or in its history. No, doozer, I don't need you up on the keyboard. My kitty cat's trying to help. One load or one road leads to a very bleak future. Kind of sounds like the Hopi um, prophecy, doesn't it? And the other one has the potential of a new golden age. Yeah, most definitely sounds like the Hopi prophecy. <laughs> the outcome depends on us, each one of us, starting right now, and it starts by freeing your mind. The key to reclaiming our freedom and creating a better world is for each of us to reclaim our sovereignty. So what is sovereignty? Well, the word sovereign refers to the power or right that a nation slash state or individual has to determine its own destiny, to not be controlled by others. The ability to determine one's own destiny has been termed self-determination, and it's one aspect of the timeless idea called freedom. Self-determination and freedom are said to be intrinsic rights bestowed on us by Source God. I don't like the word God. It has too many ugly connotations to it. I'll just stick with Source. Thank you. The American Founding Fathers firmly thought so, 
and called these inalienable rights. Personal sovereignty refers to the intrinsic right of an individual to self-determination. Now it's starting to sound a little bit like Ron Paul, don't you think? Lots of people talking like this. But having the right of sovereignty is not the same as being sovereign. One must assert a right through one's thoughts and actions, or the right is essentially lost. Ultimately, your sovereignty has to be demonstrated. The classic saying, freedom is not free, echoes this idea. Rights must be claimed by the constant application of attention, thought, and engagement. An important part of being truly free is the responsibility to be highly discerning about the ideas, beliefs, and attitudes that we choose to accept, accept from society. In fact, we must be independent-minded and confident enough to form our own ideas, beliefs, and attitudes, despite the pressure that society puts on us to conform. God, can you imagine if everybody dressed the same? Egad. What would Valley Girls do? <gasps> oh my God, she showed up wearing the same thing I did. We must not just blindly accept everything our government, religions, teachers, and so-called experts. You know, those former drips under pressure. Yeah, don't blindly accept what they want us to believe. Doing so gives away our power and allows the powers that be, although I refer to them as the leeches that be because they are blood suckers on the rest of us, sucking away our life blood and our life force and everything that we do, they just suck off of it. Those leeches that be wish to create a world that serves their agenda. A world that might not be in our best interests. You think? Mm. Yeah. Why personal sovereignty is important? If we don't start forming our own beliefs, trusting our own inner knowledge, and standing for what we know in our heart is right, not that right that the Constitution supposedly protects or designates or however you wish to put that, not that right. What is right? What is true? What is honest? What is moral? What is not causing harm to another, intentional harm or violence to another? which there is a difference between force and violence. The future of our world will be defined and created by a very few with a very self-serving agenda if we do not start doing our own. In this world that worships the almighty dollar, commercial interests are steering the ship. We have allowed them to hijack our government, our religions, our media, and our beliefs and attitudes. Materialism, consumerism, separatism, and fear serve their interests. And you know what? I don't think we've allowed them to hijack our government. We have allowed them to hijack us with tools like government and religion and media and forced beliefs, forced fed beliefs. We're giving away our power. But the leeches that be only steer the ship because we've bought into all the beliefs and attitudes and have let ourselves become apathetic and disengaged. So let's not point fingers and blame those that we perceive are manipulating us. Because if we know that they're manipulating us, then stop letting them do it. It's called personal responsibility. 
realize that we are allowing ourselves to be manipulated. Thank you. I think I just said that. Allowing ourselves to be taken into a future not of our design. We are fully responsible for everything about our lives, including what we let happen to us. And we are letting a lot happen to us. Don't fall into the victim mentality trap and get caught up in the blame and complain game. That only gives away your power. And you need to realize, remember, actually physically do it if you have to. When you point a finger of blame at someone else, look down at your hand. Got three fingers pointing right back at you. Now, I'm in this, I know it says that um, we are responsible for everything about our lives and everything that we let happen to us. Now, that is not to say that if some crazy douchebag although I shouldn't call them a douchebag. Douchebags can actually be, have a purpose. Anima bags can too. Mm, let's see. I'll have to come up with a, an appropriate nickname for them. Uh, but, you know, if someone takes it into their mind that they are going to cause us grievous harm or possibly take us out, that's not necessarily something that's our fault if someone else, you know, you do have to interact with others. And so, yes, when we do things, you know, if we set ourselves up for a situation, yeah, but it's not just because, well, you know, you shouldn't have worn that dress because that just got him all Twitter pated. Excuse me, but he should be able to, if he's considering himself a grown man, he should know how to control his bodily urges. How someone dresses, whether they be 23 or 14, is immaterial. You need to control your bodily urges. That's a little side note. Hello down the little squirrel road. Far too many of us are letting our beliefs and values be determined by others. Far too many of us are just going along with what we're told, following what the government, the church, teachers, or them Hollywood or Horlywood idols have told us to believe or do or be or explicitly or implicitly. Dooby dooby doo. No, thank you. Far too many of us are deferring to the opinions and ideas of authorities. This gives away your power and allows others to control us. And while I'm on this, before I lose this thread of thought, if you're angry at, per, at someone, if you're wanting to get back at someone, if what someone says pisses you off and you have to constantly snipe back at them and pick fights with them and all that other fun shit, you do realize you're letting them live rent free in your head, don't you? I recognize that because I've done it myself. I still do it from time to time, not nearly as often as I used to. But you know what? If when you're not forgiving someone for being a total ass munch, that means that you're letting them live rent free in your head. Actually, when there's f forgiveness involved, you're forgiving yourself for allowing them space in your head. It doesn't mean you condone their behavior or accept their behavior. You can still, you know, dislike them vehemently. Stay away from them. Avoid them, however. But you don't have to let them, you know, take up residence in your mind and cause you to get frustrated. You can control your emotions. You can kick them out any time. And when you do forgiveness, you're forgiving yourself and you're letting them go and getting them out and you're moving on. Just had to get that put out there. I see a lot of people, especially on Facebook, man, oh man, oh man, oh man, there's an awful lot of pissed off people and they're just beating that horse and that horse has been dead for years. Let it go. Let it go. Move on. Do something positive. Show them, if nothing else, whether they see it or not, show them 
that they're wrong by showing that you can do it. Be surprised how good you feel when you're done. Oh well, back to this article. Oftentimes the authorities, or those that control or influence them, have hidden agendas that are not in our best interest, you think? <laughs> They're in their own best interest, and that is called human nature. And human nature is self-preservation, -pres uh, so yeah. And sometimes when they've done something so diabolical, so disgusting, that they know they have to do things in order to preserve themselves. Because if the information got out, <laughs> they, they may not be real healthy by the time people are... Because, you know, sometimes you just plain get pissed and just act. Just saying. You know, humanity's been known to do that from time to time throughout the ages. This goes on to say that to, contr to reclaim our power, we need to start forming our own beliefs. Trust our inner truth and do what we know is right, not what others tell us or society expects. We need to engage our hearts and minds and stand firm in what we know is true and right. If we don't do this soon, we might find ourselves living in a dystopian future like the ones explored in numerous fiction novels. 1984, anyone? The erosion of freedom in the, in the age of distraction, obsession, and fear is real. In this era dominated by consumerism and materialism and the pursuit of the almighty dollar, Many of us are so busy and distracted by chasing the money and the possessions and the thrills that we are failing to see that we are gradually giving away more and more of our power and freedom. This slow erosion is going on all around us, subtly and not so subtly, on many levels. Are you sitting in a pan with a bunch of the frogs? Does it feel like it's getting a little warmer? Yeah. By the way, those of you out there that are, you know, doing the American dream, working your nine-to-fivers or whatever the hell, you know, and, and you're working so you can make this money, so you can buy this new gadget, so that you can do all this cool stuff, but you can't afford to do all this cool stuff because you got to pay for that new gadget that you just borrowed to the hilt in order to buy and so you keep working and keep paying and never get to enjoy those things that you just thought you had to have whittle it down you don't need all that shit whittle it down you'd be surprised how much free time you have if you don't think you have to have all that stuff Your, f your power ends where the fear begins. That's from Barbara Marciniak from The Path of Empowerment. I've read a few of her books. I kind of enjoy them. Another one of the quotes in here is, Mass beliefs in the power of outside authorities are firmly entrenched in your psyche, raising many questions about the truth of who you are and why you place your trust outside of yourself. That's also from Barbara Marciniak. So, who does this all serve? It serves shadowy commercial and political interests and the military industrial complex, and it keeps them in the power and in the money. Fear porn, fear porn. So, for them, it's all about the money, nothing else seems to matter. No higher purpose than to serve themselves. And they are masters of manipulation and are capitalizing on our, the boogeyman of the month this month. Spin that wheel, Vanna. It's time to reclaim your power. It's our divine right and responsibility to own our own beliefs, ideas, principles, and values. It's time we reclaim our confidence in our inner knowledge 
and have the courage to stand for truth and justice despite what our institutions, the media, and others may be telling us. Thank you, Vinny, for stepping up and covering some of this stuff that's big in the news right now. Thank you for the Bundy information that you keep putting out there for everyone. We need to stop blaming the system and wake up from our laziness, our distractions and dependencies to reclaim our power so we can create a better world. It's time to remember who you really are. Not who others or society says you are or can be. It's time to stand in your own personal truths, not what others have told you is true. It's time to form your own beliefs rather than just adopt what others believe. It's time to stand for what you know in your heart is right rather than what society tells you is right even if it means standing alone. You do know you're not a human being having a spiritual experience, if you are. You truly are a spiritual being that has come to this playground of reality, physical reality, to enjoy all that is and all that is entailed in being human. It's wonderful if you truly wish to experience what it is to be human, but that takes work. You are a slice of a powerful infinite being that we call the universe, the source of all that is. Stand in that power confidently. Be true to yourself and stop being a follower. Be the change you wish to see. It's not easy, but you can do it. You don't need teachers or experts or professors or gurus or priests or pastors or church leaders or heroes or idols to tell you what to believe or what the truth is or to show you how to connect with the source. You don't need their beliefs, ideologies, or specific practices that they swear are the one and only way to reach the truth. There are many paths to reach the truth. Over seven billion at last count. And don't just believe me either. Hell, I'm just another little bit of spirit experiencing human reality. I'm learning right along with you. We're all teachers and students. Realize that. Learn from each other. There is no room for arrogance because we're all learning and we're all teaching. We're all setting examples. It is all within you. All the knowledge of the universe is deep within you. You are connected to all of it, to the source, or whatever you choose to call it. Just go within, become quiet, and trust what you find, what you feel, what you know. A bright future for humanity is still very much possible. But we're going to have to wake up out of our haze of consumption and distraction and laziness and apathy and fear and start paying attention and getting engaged. Even though all our experiences expand Source's understanding of itself and the nature of its existence and therefore are all valuable, Surely we've had enough of the many less than desirable themes repeating in our experiences. Surely we've had enough of wage and debt slavery, of going to a job every day that we hate or that bores us to tears, 
of all the competition and conflict, of all the pain and suffering. Are we not tired of that? I think it's safe to say that our source would en encourage us. Choose a higher and grander vision of what we could be. I think it's safe to say that our source would prefer the experience of joy and abundance and freedom for all. So let's make it happen. This was by Jeff Street. Thank you ever so much, Jeff Street, for writing this. I truly do appreciate it. And, uh, wow, we really do need to. And, and there's the one thing that's really sad is there are so many people out there that seem to think, we'll come up with a way to fix this. Nobody's come up with an idea that will fix this mess without massive bloodshed. There is no one fix it because there's more than one per one person on this planet. There are seven billion plus fix-its. But to me, the only rule you really need is thou shalt not steal. Because everything that you do in a form of violence is also a form of theft. Whether it's stealing someone's life, stealing someone's livelihood, stealing someone's production, stealing someone's innocence, stealing someone's control over their own body. It's all forms of theft. Thou shalt not steal. You make that your creed, and I'm just going to put this out there. I'm not telling you you have to do it, but for me, that's my creed. Thou shalt not steal. Don't steal from someone else. Don't take what is not yours. If it is not freely given, it is not yours to take. That's how I try to live my life. And you know what? It's pretty good. I'm pretty happy. I don't have a whole heck of a lot of material goods, but I don't need them. Let's see. Before the Spanish arrived, there was hundreds of native tribes. Yes, that's true. And yes, Rob works. Over a hundred million were here before the Europeans came, and we brought disease. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. We'll just move in once you kind of vacate the premises, which is another thing. You know, y'all seem to, and I think Circles uh, has it pretty good. Um, she said that um, they don't really own the house they live in. They're just paying the bank for the privilege of residing there. As long as you keep paying the bank, you'll get to keep residing there. You know, so, eh, it's an agreement that you enter into. Who is waving at me? Miss T.D. Sanders. Hi, T.D. How are you doing over here on this effing site? Hey, lady. It's been a while since I've seen you. I hope you're doing exceptionally well. Put this over here as well on the mines site. Okay. There you go. Now that I've gotten that shared, let's see. Oh, wow. I have just really, really prattled on, haven't I? Uh, let me see. What are you guys talking about over here? Uh, so damn insane invades Kuwait. Yeah. He was so damn insane. Yes, Rob works. Freedom is very scary stuff. Oh, your life is nachos? Oh. <laughs> I know how that word came around. That's nacho cheese. That's mine. Yep, my life is nachos as well, hon. I truly do understand that. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, what's that, Frumpy? Um, statement of individual freedom. Yes, I do love that statement of individual freedom. 
And freedom is not for lazy, apathetic people. No, it is not. And adulting is hard as well, Rob. Yes, it is. Sadly, Grimmy, there are an awful lot of people that do not wish to be responsible for themselves. They want someone else. You know, because it's so much easier if you have an argument with your neighbor. It's so much easier to call those law enforcement officers to come and handle the situation than it is to be an adult. Adulting is hard. Than it is to be an adult and go over and iron out your differences without violence. That's really difficult. A lot of people don't want to do that. They'd much rather sit over here and grab their cell phone and call the popo and and say, that person's being mean to me, and then the popo come and they draw their guns, and if that person is lucky, they survive the encounter while you are safe in your home, peeking out through the curtains, Gladys Kravitz, and watching them being carted off, all for something probably very stupid. But yeah, it's hard being responsible, but you know what? It's worth it. Honest and for true, it is. Oh, look at that, Milton Friedman. If you look at the drug war from a purely economic point of view, the role of the government is to protect the drug cartel. Yeah, well said, Mr. Friedman. Thank you very much. That is the truth. They are, yeah, they are the enforcers for the cartel. How wonderful. Not. Okay, I'm going to go back to my pocket. Let's go have a peek, see what else I got in here. Oh, Sessions. Sessions is such a doof. I just really do not wish to. Ay. Um, <laughs> here we go. Let's go check this one out. This is one, you know, that this um, gives me hope in the next generation. And, you know, it's not, it's not all as fear pornish. The world is not as fear pornish as they would like us to believe. I mean, I'd, I converse with people around the world. And sure, it's on the internet, and sure, they could be lying to me, but uh, for the most part, I don't think they are. You know, I trust my gut, and I trust, therefore, trust them. And to just jibber-jabber with them, life really isn't that horrible. It's not as horrible as they want us to think it is. They, it's not, you know, it's not everybody's out to get us because we're so fucking free. F-bomb. Because, yeah, we're so fucking free, we get to go and apply for licenses for everything. And if we don't, then, by God, we get thrown in, inside a cage and get three hots and a cot, or at least PB&J and, and a bed bug infested mattress. Yippee! How free do you feel now? Huh? I'd, I'd just as soon avoid that shit, if you don't mind. So... Back to this younger generation. This is from awarenessact.com. Ninth grade students gain the attention of scientists after their experiment reveals the dark truth about Wi-Fi. This is from two weeks ago. Booyah. By the way, I think, if, oh, last year, I think it was sometime, I uh, read a thing about... Um, some sixth graders over in the UK that did an experiment with microwaves. And I have not used a microwave since, oh, it's been over a year ago now, because I haven't used, I have not intentionally consumed something from a microwave in over a year. Not even water boiled. I have not intentionally. So I'm proud of myself. Have I noticed a health benefit from that? I live with myself every day, so it's not that I really am going to, I, I feel good, I have energy, the food, as uh, a friend of mine says, the food still makes a turd, so, <laughs> I don't have any diseases in my body that I know of, and as far as I know, I'm healthy as a Grammy, so there you go. But, yeah, here's another little fun thing. 
children coming out with this stuff because adults don't want to adult and research themselves. Okay, I needed to drink coffee there. So, we have long encouraged students to find ways to connect with their school work, uh, making it interesting and personal, holding their attention longer and allowing them to see more success. Yes, dear. Smart meters are bad juju as well. Oh yeah, Frumpy, yeah. I'm I'm catching up the chat over here on the RLM and yeah, that is the cheapest way to uh, get your dog put down. Yeah, it is. It's a bullshit thing, but eh, you know, some people are just full of it. They are walking, talking um, suits f of defecation. That's just, or yeah. What's that? Um, I don't want to use defecation. Fecal matter. There you go. They are walking, talking skin suits with nothing but fecal matter on the inside. Yeehaw! Now, I know some people like that. So, this was the case in a school in northern Jutland. Is that how you pronounce that? I hope so. Where a group of ninth grade students recently embarked on a biology experiment inspired by their own personal experiences with concentration. Lee Nielsen, one of the students, explained, We all think we have experienced difficulty concentrating in school. If we had slept with the phone next to our head and sometimes also experienced having difficulty sleeping. So, curious about the shared experience, the group of girls designed an experiment to investigate the impact of Wi-Fi radiation on living cells. Specifically, they chose to use cress seeds. Taking 400 seeds, they separated them out across 12 different trays. Six of the trays were placed in each of two rooms. Both rooms were kept at the same temperature, and both sets of trays were given the same amount of water and access to sunlight throughout the experiment. The one difference between the two rooms, creating the basis for their experiment, is that the trays in one room were placed next to two Wi-Fi routers. The Wi-Fi routers broadcast the same type of radiation that can be observed coming from our cell phones, allowing the students to recreate the impact of sleeping with your phone on your bedside table next to your head. The results? After 12 days, it was shocking to see the difference between the two sets of trays. While the crest seeds in the first room were growing well, apparently healthy and flourishing in their environment, the same could not be said in the second room. The seeds that were placed next to the router showed no real growth at all. Some of the seeds could even be observed showing signs of mutation or dying off entirely. And they do have pictures here. The experiment was enough to open the students' eyes about their cell phone use and whether or not it is safe to bring their phones to bed at night. It is truly frightening that there is so much effect. So we were very shocked by the result, Nielsen, say, Nielsen said. None of us sleep with the mobile next to the bed anymore. Either the phone is put far away or it's put in another room and the computer is always off. Not only was the experiment received well by the girls' school, but since the word got out, they've started to receive international attention as biologists and radiation experts acknowledge the importance of their discovery. One expert that has shown a great deal of interest in the experiment, even going so far as planning his own follow-up experiments, is Ali Johansson. This is a professor um, at the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm. And he will begin his assessment into the girls' findings by repeating the experiment with his research colleague, Professor Marie Claire Kamert, Kamert at the university in, yeah, at the, at the university. Because <laughs> I'm not... I would Sophie buttle that. Johansson 
was highly impressed by the girls' efforts. He praised them, saying that the girls stayed within the scope of their knowledge, skillfully implemented, and developed a very elegant experiment. The wealth of detail and accuracy is exemplary. Choosing Cress was a very in, was very intelligent, and I could go on. So see, scientists don't know everything, and true science, true science, is proved by experimentation and the results thereof, not this shit of assumptions and fudged numbers. That's not true science. So what's next for the girls? Johansson made it clear that he wouldn't hesitate to work with these talented, intelligent students moving forward. I sincerely hope that they spend their future professional life in researching because I definitely think they have a natural aptitude for it. Personally, I would love to see these people in my team. Bravo, young ladies. So see, children, not, you know, they try and try to mold the critical thinking and the natural curiosity out of kids and try and try to get them to just regurgitate, memorize and regurgitate. And then you have these wonderful students like this that step out of that box and make you go, that's how you do it. Good job, girls. Young ladies, actually. Good job. And this one will get shared all over the place because I have granddaughters and uh, they have cell phones. And I want them to know how to protect themselves. Of course, I, I have a pretty open dialogue with my grandkids anyway, but yeah. This is impressive. Thank you, ladies, for the wonderful job. Okay, what is this? Okay, T.D. Sanders said, Four years for me pertaining to the Zap machine. A good Faraday cage. Save them. You never know. Yeah, true. Awesome, T.D. I'll put this over here on mines as well. Okay, I gotta see. I got some. Hi, David Standing Oak. I see you, sweetie, over here on mines. Awesome. David is a friend of mine from over on Fakey Book, and I actually introduced him to mine. Well, yeah, me and one other person introduced him to mines. So he's he's doing a very good job of coming over here to Fakey Book and letting them know how fakey they are and saying, come on over to mines. He's a recruiter, don't you know? He's doing an excellent job of it, too. If, you, if I don't mind saying so myself... Me, personally, I like having all of these different places because I've been on fakey books so damn long. It's like, they already know. There ain't no sense in me. And I know what fakey book is up to, so it's like, eh, I'll play. I know what y'all are doing. And when I get tired of playing with you, you know, like a cat gets tired of playing with the mouse, I'll be done with you. But for now, you are still useful to me. So, there you go. Oh, hey, I'm checking out the chat over here in... Uh, the RLM, and Goo Brazilla says he's got a silver foil blanket and a one, okay, um, one thirty-eighth metal where he sleeps. All I can do is shielding without getting in trouble. Ah, there you go. You know, some of that is if you, if you keep your body healthy, and I know we are getting inundated with all kind of nastiness. But if you work to feed your body the proper fuel, it will also help to combat some of that nastiness. And yes, you do need to take it upon yourself. I don't take my phone to bed. I haven't taken my phone in the bedroom in over a year as well. Been about the same time that I stopped using the microwave. 
Has it helped with my mental acuity? I didn't know. <laughs> I'm not swearing by anything. So, let me go check out Twitter real quick. I see I got lots and lots of notifications over there. So, let's see. Hmm. Ooh. Sweet. Okay, you know what? I think it's about time I drag my happy little butt over to the pig. I gotta see what happened this date in history. And I gotta check out Porcus and Hambo, those two crazy piggy guys. Hey! And they updated it today, too. Sweet! Fork off. <laughs> Word of the day, bipartisan. The word of warning that's shouted by the Elephant Clan elected tormentors after they've plunged the knife into the exposed backs of America's sovereign individuals. Thank you for saying sovereign individuals instead of citizens, because there is no such critter as a so sovereign citizen. Just saying. Quotable quotes section. Hollywood is about cowardice. Horlywood, well, it should be pronounced Horlywood in my opinion, is about deceit. Horlywood is about phoniness. Horlywood is about leftism. Horlywood deserves a crime tape around it. That's from Mark Levine. Uh, yeah, uh, it's about phoniness because those people are paid to pretend that they're someone else. They're paid to do that. And you know who pays them? We do. <laughs> Every time you rent a movie, every time you go to the movie, every time you turn on that TV, you're paying them. Yeah, doesn't that feel wonderful? In the Tasty Tidbits, Einstein's of Horlywood. It's kind of interesting, but most is probably true. Never have understood why people think celebrities have any legitimacy. Ever looked up the education credentials of Horlywood and New York soothsayers? Most of them rely on knowledge clouds drifting across the Pacific, perhaps from an Asian mystic who wears lots of colorful beads. Or maybe it's that knowledge cloud coming from Fukushima. Hey, yeah. The mystic that brought them deep understanding of economics and governance and military affairs and especially science. Yeah, it inspires them into bold words. You know, people like Leonardo DiCaprio's self-declared climate expertise, which enables him to speak on the world's environmental issues with a high school education. Okay, now, just getting a high school education, I'm not going to diss that because, well, I got a high school education in your, um, oh, how shall we say, your uh, societal Education. Now, I have spent the rest of my years thus far in the School of Hard Knocks. I'm working on my graduate studies right now in Grammyism. Apparently, he never took college biology or chemistry or physics or climatology, yet he knows more than most scientists. He proved that by addressing climate change before a full gathering of the UN. The UN. Is it a quinky dink that it's the UN? Uncivilized. Uncola. <laughs> Unthinking. Unlearned. Uncaring. The UN. Un. How about Sean Penn? His quick takes on everything put him on the lofty level of an Einstein. He visited Iraq once and became an expert on the country. Same for Iran. He's also become buddies with the brutal Venezuelan communist Hugo Chavez. Is Hugo even still alive? And consistently lauding the murderous thug. Ha! Huh. Now that Chavez is gone and Venezuelans are raiding dumpsters for food scraps, Penn is having a rare silent moment. Well, he deserves some credit for becoming the world, a world affairs genius based on two years of auto mechanics classes at Santa Monica College. Katy Perry. Well, we all know where Katy Perry's brains reside. It starts with the same letter. She may be a very, you know, and actually when she started out, I kind of liked her music. I can't, I just can't stand it anymore. I can't, I, mm. 
I just can't. I can't go there anymore. But you know, at one time, I enjoyed her music. At one time. Can't say the same for Miley Cyrus. <laughs> oh, he's got Katy Perry here. He's got Robert De Niro here. He's got Harry Belafonte here. How about Rosie O'Donnell and Al Sharpton? And Julia Roberts and Brooke Shields. Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, from the Garden State that didn't look like very much of a garden where what I saw of it. Yeah. All of those illustrious people that are so learned. And you know what? They have opinions. I have opinions. We all have opinions. I just don't tell everybody that mine is gospel truth. It it may be true for me, but that don't mean you got to believe it. Look it up yourself. You lazy butt. <laughs> don't take my word for it. Look it up. Okay, let's see. What happened this date in history while I'm over here at the pig? So, the 10th of January, 1994, feminist heroine Lorena Bobbitt goes on trial in Manassas, Virginia for whacking off hubby John's business, his dangly bits, his junk uglies. <laughs> She muffs chance to sell her own brand of knives to women's studies majors. Oh, man. Was that a pun? Dude, seriously? Dude. <laughs> okay, this date in history, the 10th of January, the year 2000, when the world was supposed to come to an end because of K2 or Y2K. Yeah. Apparently, a black hole of marketplace suckage forms when America Online decides to buy Time Warner for one one hundred and sixty-two billion dollars. The ensuing economic carnage leaves both firms shadows of them of their former selves. Well, you know that's what happens when something gets so damn big that it can't take care of itself anymore. It topples. If you can't stay balanced, you topple. Oops. There's lots more over here on the pig. PIGazette.com. Come on over to see Hambo and Porcus. Tell them Grammy sent you. The, it, it won't get you any benefits. They may actually, you know, run away. Well, no, they won't run away. But they will definitely put up a steel cage between you and them. <laughs> they know me. Oops. <laughs> Go on over and check them out. They do have a lot of funnies over there as well. Okay, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. So what else is going on over here? Uh, Sheldon Cooper. Who's Sheldon Cooper? Sheldon? Sheldon. Hawking. Yes, Moosey, Katy Perry is Illuminati. She didn't, you know, when she first started out, though, she, but she gradually started, and it was like, and there were a couple of songs there where I thought, oh, sweetheart, you're going to the dark side, and then she just dove in head first, and it's like, oh, damn it, that sucks. Okay, most Americans cannot name a single living scientist. Hawking does not count, because Hawking is not a scientist. Hawking is just this meat suit that sits in a wheelchair and supposedly says all of this quote unquote intelligent shit but I don't believe it I don't believe it have you listened frickin computer generated voice came up with some original theory oh it's a theory though Grim <laughs> if, it ha if it's not proven don't mean shit I can come up with some original theories. <laughs> Don't mean shit. Don't mean shit. I'm not impressed. With a lot of scientists in this world, I am not impressed. Okay. Um, yes, Goobrazilla, they are there are a lot less harmful frequencies. They just don't want to use them. 
Yes, 432 hertz is very friendly, Frumpy. Thank you for putting that in there. Oh, Rain, did someone beat you to the duck? Damn it. Who sings? Who sings? Who sings? Katie, Katie does have a nice voice. She just, I just can't go there anymore. Just can't. She's too Illuminati. She's not quite Miley Cyrus Illuminati, but she's close. Um, oh, A Brief History of Time was... Oh, thanks, Grim. Where was that? Did I miss it? <laughs> yes, Grim. Science is theory. That is all. Yep. <sighs> Because once it's proven, then it's a law. But yet, oh, do I need to beat that horse? I think that horse is dead. Okay, here we go. I got one more little tidbit to get to. It's from last year. Then I think it's still pretty relevant. And I have enough time, I think, to get to it. This is from news.ok.ubc.ca or the University of British Columbia. Given the choice, patients will reach for cannabis over prescribed opioids. But a bing, but a boom, and yet big pharma, well, soon they will be able to. But for now, <laughs> that's just not right. It's cutting into their profit margin. Chronic pain sufferers are those, or oh, excuse me, and those taking mental health meds would rather turn to cannabis instead of their prescribed opioid medication, according to a new study. Now, this was posted February 27th of 2017, so it's not quite a year ago. This study is one of the first to track medical cannabis use under the new system of licensed proceed or producers, meaning that all participants had physician authorized authorization to access cannabis in addition to their prescription medicines. This is from the UBC Associate Professor Zach Walsh, who was the co-author of the study. The study tracked more than 250 patients with prescribed medical cannabis. People treated for conditions such as chronic pain, mental health, and gastrointestinal issues. Overall, 63% of respondents reported using cannabis instead of their prescription drugs which included opioids to treat pain, uh, benzo whatever whatevers, which are sed sedatives, and antidepressants. Benzodiazepines, that's, yeah. Hey, I said it, and that's a really big word. It's got more than 10 letters. <laughs> this study, um, led by Philippe Lucas, is the vice president of patient research and access in Tilray, which is a federally authorized medical cannabis production and research company, and a doctoral student at the University of Victoria Center for Addiction Research at BC, or British Columbia. Lucas suggests the main reason for the switch to cannabis from prescribed meds is due to the reduced side effects, better symptom management, and a feeling that cannabis is safer than prescription drugs, not to mention cost. Because, <laughs> yeah, even medical cannabis is cheaper than the other shit, the opioids and that other nasty stuff. Walsh goes on to suggest cannabis may be an important or may have an important role to play in addressing the problematic use of pharmaceutical medications such as opioids. And yet, they keep telling us it's a gateway drug. Cannabis and marijuana, you know that demon's the devil's lettuce, that demon weed, that stuff's a gateway drug to the harder stuff. And yet this just proves the opposite. People are given the harder stuff, and they prefer to take cannabis. Damn. I hate when that happens. Not. <laughs> Walsh goes on to suggest that cannabis may have an important... Okay, I already read that. Excuse me. In 2001, Canada became the first, or became one of the first nations to develop a program to allow access to cannabis for medical purposes. 
As of August of 2016, more than 30 federally authorized licensed producers of cannabis provide product to more than 65,000 patients. Further research into how well cannabis works compared to the accepted front-line treatments is warranted, said Walsh. Additionally, long-term research into the potential impact of cannabis substitution on the quality of patients' lives is ongoing. I'm sure they have a much better quality of life than the life on opioids, because, oh, the nasty side effects of opioids. And cannabis, as far as I know, the only side effect I've ever experienced is um, the munchies and sleepiness. In that order. <laughs> okay. Um... Oh, yes, that's true. I'm reading the chat over here in the RLM, and Gubrazilla says, Just as sure as your monitor works, science, the word, has been misused, just like environmentalists. Yes, I know some environmentalists that are not very environmentally friendly. <sighs> that's true, Grammy. Even the, in, even the scientific laws are just theories, and those are often proven wrong. Because you know what? If you have a preconceived notion, and, and I'm sorry, but most scientists, most, I'm going to say 99%, that go forth and try to prove or disprove something have some kind of preconceived leaning to them. And so, therefore, they're going to read that data, the results, in a certain way. That's just, a, that is part of human nature. So that's a lot of the reason why I just kind of go, eh, science, really? Eh. You, science is one thing. Scientists, <laughs> piffle. You may be smart guys that need, that know how to do, you know, all kinds of these equations and shit using letters from every alphabet on the planet, as well as numbers. But other than that, you know, if what you're telling me don't ring true to me, I'm going to call bullshit on you. I don't care. Your astronomical numbers, piffle. Once you put so many zeros behind a number, any kind of real number, you know, like a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, those are, you know, the more zeros you put behind it, the more unreal that number becomes. And if you just put, you have a 9 and 45 zeros behind it, you've got a 9 with 45 nothings behind it. Wow, proud of you. Good job. Booyah. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to share this over here on Minds, and I'm trying to figure out how in the hell I want to, <clears throat> there you go, that'll work, and I'll put this over here on the effing side as well, and I still have time, let me see, what else shall I do? <laughs> I think I will go and check out, uh, there is one other thing since I touched on that cannabis. I won't really get into it too awful much, but I will share the link for you. Um, let's see, the UN apparently, uh, da -da -da -da. Apparently, it was the UN that set up the, uh, there it is. UN drug czar attacks U.S. states for ending cannabis prohibition. Now, this is from the New American, and it's from last year. But from what I understand, and this, I got this link off of a video. Um, I, I had to do some, actually, it's a couple years old. Um, 
The UN is the one that came up with the schedules for drugs. And they are not happy campus when it comes to USA states exerting some kind of sovereignty and saying, no, of course, you know, it's all for monetary reasons because they're going, look at all the tax dollars we can generate. But and, and, yeah, the UN drug czar attacks U.S. states for ending cannabis prohibition. Why? Because, well, it is a natural growing weed that has a multitude of benefits to it and since you can't patent nature damn it we just can't have if we can't make money off of it you can't have it and so now apparently the UN is pissed or at least in 2015 it was with four American states so far having defied the United Nations and the federal government by ending marijuana prohibition the UN's Army of Drug Warriors has been meeting in Vienna to plan a response and demand obedience to the global drug control regime. Yeah, the way you control it is how you profit. We know how you work. And Uruguay is also in UN crosshairs with the planetary body's prohibition bureaucrats vowing to dispatch a high-level mission to the South American nation in a bid to have the cannabis plant recriminalized in accordance with UN narcotics treaties. Fuck you who? However, resistance to UN demands and even to the dictator-dominated outfit are growing with experts increasingly speaking out against the entire notion of the UN-run global prohibition um, that has failed in its supposed mission to stamp out unapproved substances. See, once again, it's un. They are unapproving that UN, un. According to the Un-International Narcotics Control Board, or INCB, Un, see, INCB, it's the Un-INCB, one of the global agencies responsible for waging the drug war worldwide. Planetary bureaucrats are pressuring the USA government to defy the Constitution, fuck you who, and impose pot prohibition on unwilling states. See, they're putting their un here, but we are unwilling. We're going to take your un and we're going to put it by willing and say fuck you who. Beginning in 2012, with a decision of voters in Colorado and Washington state to nullify U.S. statutes and un-agreements demanding war on marijuana and its users, prohibition of the substance has suffered several major blows across the USA. In uh, 2014, voters in Alaska, Oregon, and Washington, D.C. nullified the war on pot. Before that, almost half of America or American states had already defied the UN and the feds by making medical marijuana legal for sick people whose doctors prescribe it. UN, UN, UN. Here's your UN and you can put it up between your buns. How's that sound, un? Oh, well. I'm going to go ahead and share this with y'all so you can peruse, finish reading it at your leisure. And I'm going to get out of here because you know what? I'm getting a little bit of a rumbly in the tumbly. You'd think I'd been toking a little bit because I'm hungry. I haven't had supper yet. Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 3, or the RLM uh, Radio.xyz site, or the RLM Spreaker channel, and later to be on the RLM YouTube channel and lots of other places. I'm just everywhere. I'm everywhere. I'm inundating you. You will be. <laughs> I like that, Rob Works. Awesome. You're just awesome sauce, Rob. Oh, well, I will be back on Friday for the Freaker Friday edition of the Rocket Chair. Uh, but until then, 
I hope you all have an absolutely splendiferous rest of your wackadoodle Wednesday. Or if it's Thursday, for those of you across the International Dateline, like the lovely Miri B down.